Hey guys, can anyone hear me? Yeah, Wonderful. we can. Right. Yeah. Hey, welcome. Great, great. Here. Had some technical issues. What's going on, guys? Looking forward for this AMA. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, we'll have a nice little, uh, nice little interview. I'll just, you know, probe around, ask you guys some questions, and uh, you know, see if you guys have anything you want to announce or anything like that. And are you guys interested in doing an AMA? Would you like to maybe, you know, at the end of the space, open up the floor and let let any any of the listeners come up and ask some specific questions? Yeah, please do. We're looking forward to it. Awesome, awesome. Well, Dima, Nir, are you guys ready to kick it off? Sure. I'm go, guys. Okay, great. Well, normally we do these on Thursday, but uh, today we're doing it on Tuesday and just having a nice little conversation with XP Network. So let me grab a tweet from their actual Twitter and I'll pin it up to the top so that you guys can give that, that Twitter a follow and, and stay up to date with the news and stuff. I'm probably just going to grab um, the space announcement, pin that up, and then you guys from there can uh, follow XP Network, join their socials, and, and just follow the Twitter and stay up to date with everything. So XP Network is a NFT bridge. Um, I've actually personally used the bridge as well, uh, ported over a VeChain NFT to Ethereum twice. Uh, extremely smooth, really fun to pop open your MetaMask and see a VeChain NFT existing over there on a MetaMask on the Ethereum network. So very cool stuff. I'm really excited to get into what you guys are doing and... Uh, just how big and you know how much ground you're actually covering with this bridge. But first, uh, let's have a quick introduction. Um, Nina, why don't you tell us a little bit about, about your background? Um, you know, are, are you an NFT collector and how'd you end up at XP Network? Yeah, sure. Thank you for that intro. Uh, so a bit of background about myself. I'm in the space since 2017. I, uh, I first worked at a company called Amazix that actually... Uh, focused on community building, and back then we had all the ICO era, so I've uh, been really deep down in uh, launching up projects and uh, getting the community interest, uh, so had that going for 2017, and then I'd be taking part in a company called Firmo Network, which uh, back then was fairly new. Uh, we developed derivatives over the blockchain, uh, something that is now very common over the different exchanges, and we can see it, can see it pretty much everywhere. And uh, we sold the company to eToro, the international eToro, which today became eToro X, the crypto arm of uh, eToro itself. And, uh, and then myself and the team, we decided that we found the right uh, market fit for, uh, with the NFT craze and with the technology advancement, we found the right market fit for giving a true solution to make the ability to move NFTs truly mainstream and truly, um, truly easy. And this is why... We started XP Network with that notion. We wanted to make NFTs fully accessible for the new community that is coming from off crypto and for the community that is also in the crypto but want to explore the ability to interact with more chains in an ease and without um, you know, any specific wallet or any specific token. And that's why we created, uh, we created XP Network because we are true believers in the NFT space and we are believers on when, when we are, when, where and when uh, that is actually going. And uh, you know, we are from the whole point of what we see is from all the depths and from all the projects and from all the blockchains and from all the, all the amazing work that we do also with VeChain, we really see that the NFTs are becoming more and more normalized and we see many more use cases that are not just, a, a, you know, an image or, an, um, or a specific kind of use case like an item. We see that the NFT market is truly getting to the point that it's bringing vast utility and a truly complementary and the next step for the crypto space altogether. And we also see a lot of off-crypto community coming in. And this is exactly why uh, we created and to the purpose where we created um, uh, XP Network. So that's a quick intro for me. Thanks, Nir. I, I do have a quick follow-up, which is, are, uh, do you collect NFTs yourself? Do you have like uh, a couple NFTs that you collected over time? So uh, to be honest, the way that it works for us is that we are, you know, we are getting collections, we are getting out collections, and we are pretty much uh, handling with all the collections uh, that uh, all from all of our partner chains. So I myself, I've had interactions with different kinds of NFTs, uh, but mainly we focus on collecting through the company itself, and of course making those NFTs fully multi-chain. And so it's really, you know, about for us and for me personally, it's about uh, getting interacted with as many 
uh, collections and it's with these many kinds of technologies behind each of NFTs. And, you know, whether it's music NFTs or regular NFTs or song or media. So I would consider myself a collector, collector of NFTs, but we do that in a really vast way and in a really commercial way. Uh, so we can really, you know, touch up in all the all the kinds of the NFTs as, as a whole. So uh, that's my take on this. Very cool, Nir. Very cool. Um, yeah, guys, go follow Nir. Your, your Twitter is pretty badass. You got 4,900 followers and following zero. That's pretty badass. So guys, go follow Nir. Let's get him up to 5,000 today. Uh, Dima, welcome to the space. Um, go ahead. Tell us a little bit about, it, about your background and, and how you wound up at XP Network. Well, yeah, I started coding somewhere around uh, the year 2000. Uh, one of my first projects was uh, machine translation, actually. Uh, then I did um, market research using um, using different uh, libraries, and uh, eventually I even worked with AI. And then um, I met Nir, and he had this brilliant idea. He invited me to, to join, and this is how we started XPNet. Good. Nice to meet you, Dima. And guys, make sure you give Dima a follow. Dima, what's um what's some of the stuff you primarily do over at XP Network? Can you say it again? What are some of the duties uh, that that kind of fall under your responsibility over there at XP? Oh, okay. Well, so we develop stuff. Uh, like we develop smart contracts. Uh, we develop the off-chain parts of the bridge. We test everything, and uh, we, we help uh, the projects um, start bridging. We test together with them. We make sure that everything goes smoothly and the NFTs arrive as they should. Uh, sometimes we tailor either smart contracts or even uh, some off-chain components of the bridge uh, to their uh, specific needs. Uh, sometimes we help them deploy contracts um, if they either don't know how to or they want our help in doing so. So basically, this is this is what we're doing. And we have a big team uh, working here. We, we are around 40 people now. And we're scattered around the world. So we have developers that uh, reside in uh, India, in China, in Pakistan. And, uh, well, I interact with all, all, all those guys. <laughs> Very and they're, cool. per, they're, they're per permanent workers. They're like not people who we hire for for uh, an assignment. They are full time workers of XP Network. A full staff of um, forty plus people is is pretty insane. That's awesome. Congratulations, guys. Uh, that's huge. Um, tell me a little bit about where XP Network started. So, what was like the the first NFTs you guys bridged? Like what two chains? Well, we started in the testnet, and the first bridge we created uh, was between our own network. We actually had our own test uh, testnet, uh, which was built using uh, Polkadot technologies. So it was written <clears throat> um, in Go, but it used Rust for the smart contract language. And the first bridge we built was to Elrond, which was also uh, which also uses uh, Rust. Uh, for smart contracts, so it, it was quite convenient. And then we found differences and similarities, and it was very exciting to see that uh, the same uh, language can be so different. Because actually in Polkadot, they don't use pure Rust for smart contract, but they use Ink, which is a, a cut version of Rust, and some things are impossible in Ink. Uh, but probably this is done for security from the point of view of Polkadot. Mm -hmm. So that was the, the first bridge that we ever built. Then we started uh, connecting with Hec uh, with Heco. That was the second bridge. But then we uh, moved to more popular chains. Uh, we connected with Ethereum, then BSC, Polygon, Phantom, Avalanche. And then we kept adding chains. And then we noticed that uh, there are bridges for those um, blockchains, but there are very few for non-EVM chains. And we decided to concentrate on non-EVM uh, chains, and we saw that it's much more complicated, actually, than to connect EVM chains, because most EVM chains uh, use the same patterns, the same 
technology. But when you go to non-EVMs, it's not just a different smart contract language. It's usually a very different concept, different way of how you create tokens, where you store them, what controls them. So for example, on EVMs, um, tokens are minted and the ledger is kept inside a smart contract. While in non-EVMs, it's not always the case. In some blockchains, it is the case, but in some not. For example, on a RON, mm -hmm. there's a very different thing like ESDT token, which stands for a RON standard for digital tokens. And this is where t all the tokens live, both fungible and non-fungible and semi-fungible. Mm -hmm. And there is a concept of smart contracts. There is a concept, concept of account. And this is like a third entity where the tokens live. And uh, I haven't encountered any other blockchain that has the same pattern. And so we have to get used to it and see how it works. Um, on other chains, for example, Algorand, which is uh, another non-EVM chain, uh, tokens are created right inside accounts. So you create an asset. It's like a ledger of the tokens, but it is linked to a specific account. And this account always controls this asset, uh, which is also a very different concept. So uh -huh. we learned how diverse uh, the, the world of blockchain is, and uh, we keep expanding it. And um, the thing that we are proud of is that for some blockchains, especially non-EVMs, we are the only NFT bridge they have. For example, for Ron, for Algorand, for Tezos. Um, VeChain, VeChain would be another one, I would assume. Um, so, yeah, that's that's actually pretty awesome to hear that you guys are, are able to do that. Have you been? Have you all been surprised with the um, robust NFT communities and ecosystems on all these all these mentioned chains, like? Um, you know, when you go to a new chain to bridge over and mess around, are you guys often surprised by like how many NFTs actually exist? How many projects reach out to you guys to enable the bridge? Um, you know, how has that been discovering all these sub communities across all these blockchains? Yeah, so Ooh. I'll take oh, that. Okay. Uh, so great question. Okay. And I would say right away, you know, uh, for all the communities from all the chains, and I'll talk about specifically about VeChain because we really love the community of on VeChain. I really see, you know, the enticement and all the interesting, you know, ideas and all the all the really, you know, excitement to see the different kinds of the NFTs and see arbitrage of different NFTs on different chains and see all the use cases and everything and all you know the collections that are coming in. So this is like in a very general now, specifically speaking on VeChain. Uh, you know, the, we had a couple of blockchains that we've been really surprised, you know, from the impact on the community and from the overall interactions with everyone from both the dApps that are building on VeChain and from the community itself. And VeChain uh, community and the dApps are really amazing. And we've been able to do some tremendous work. Uh, just to nominate a few of them, we are uh, working with World of V, uh, with the VC, uh, with the Forest Nation. Uh, the, the first two are actually marketplaces, and these are uh, collections like Forest Nation. We have uh, also Exo Worlds, and we have um, was, uh, we have also the all the whole game fight industry that is coming in from the VeChain uh, from the VeChain community. We have VeChain Thor, which is a wallet. We have Sync2, and we have you know we have many more that uh, we are interacting with, and we are getting connected to more and more DApps, and uh, all together, uh, this is all coming to the place that exactly where we want to to be, which is you know enabling to all the decentralized applications that are building and creating amazing collections of NFTs to move them easily. Uh, between the chains and to interact easily while keeping the great benefits of staying on VeChain and, you know, retaining the ability to actually enjoy from all the benefits of VeChain while actually having the possibility to move NFTs from non-VeChain chains into VeChain, sell them and interact with them on different VeChain marketplaces and also for VeChain NFTs to go, uh, to go to different chains and then having those VeChain NFTs, which are the source of Debbie's VeChain, actually being arbitraged or being sold or being interacted to a different kind of user base that VeChain before did not interact with. So from that perspective, you know, we are widening up the market, we are widening up the transactions, and we are making it all together uh, with the VeChain team and with the VeChain community a much easier and bridged world altogether. Very cool. Very cool, Nir. Uh, Dima, I do, I see you popped off speaker, and I want you to, to follow up there. For anybody who's curious of some of those projects or marketplaces that Nir just listed off, I went ahead and pinned all the ones he covered. 
so from right to left, you'll see uh, VC's Twitter, uh, World of V's Twitter, which both of those are marketplaces on VeChain. Uh, and then he mentioned Forest Nation, which has recently ported from or enabled bridging to uh, Polygon Network. And then you also have Exo Worlds. I'm not sure what network they're enabled to or uh, networks, I guess. But if you guys want to check out some of those VeChain projects, feel free. The marketplaces are a lot of fun. And it's also uh, pretty important to put a disclaimer that uh, none of these projects are directly affiliated with the foundation. Uh, these are all independent developers and creators. So make sure you guys know that uh, none of these projects are directly endorsed or supported by the foundation itself. Um, we just all all build on their blockchain and, and they, and they, uh, they enjoy watching us be DGENs. So uh, yeah, look at it at your own risk. Dima, do you have follow-up thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, I could also add uh, the anonymous collection, Mad V Apes, uh, to the list. And uh, you said you are not sure what Exo Worlds are. It's a collection of, they're like exoplanets. It's like an NFT collection of planets that could exist somewhere. <laughs> um, each planet has a different color and they have different traits. Uh, but what, what I wanted to say is that we, um, because we're a bridge, it's not that we always come to a blockchain and we see an abundant ecosystem. It's not always the case. Some, in, in most cases, it is so, but in some, it's not. Because sometimes we're uh, opening the gates to a chain that is only evolving. And uh, there is no or very little uh, ecosystem there. And they're only hoping to build this ecosystem. And that's why the bridge is super important for them. And uh, But they already have users who are used to buying and selling fungible tokens. And now imagine that uh, tokens from VeChain will appear in this new ecosystem. And all our wrapped NFTs, they always have the mention, they always remember on which chain they were born. So they will bring this VeChain name to all the other ecosystems. And people say, oh, what is VeChain? I want to go there. Because if, if such cool NFTs are coming from there, so maybe there are more. Okay, and this is... So sending NFTs from the chain is not a bad thing, actually. It's like a message to the other chains that, hey, we have a cool community. And it's like an invitation for them to come and see more and enlarge the community of VeChain. Okay, so this is what I wanted to say, that uh, people, users, collections shouldn't be afraid to migrate part of their uh, collection somewhere else because it attracts even more users to the chain itself because they all have the name of VeChain there. And that's genius that you guys had the foresight to do that because it not only allows the VeChain community to bridge out and, you know, get their NFTs on other chains, but also represent the VeChain community um, the entire time, right? I, th I think that is genius. Um, you guys have bridged VeChain to Algorand, is that correct? Uh, to all the chains that we connect, including Algorand. Yeah, I've noticed uh, I've noticed quite an influx of uh, algo degens um, coming over to V chain spaces and, and and really noticing and being excited about your guys' bridge. Um, now, I'll, I'll be honest, I haven't seen many ETH people pop over here. A few, but not many. But really, that algorithm influx, um, they were popping into our Twitter spaces and just being like, "Yeah, we saw XP Network, and you know, wanted to come over here and check it out." So you're 100 percent right. It does bring people to V chain. Uh, and for anybody out there listening, just check out some of those pinned tweets. There's actually an abundance of VNFT, uh, VNFT is what we call them, VeChain NFTs, projects all across our ecosystem. A uh, huge, a huge group of people um, really, really are passionate about it and, and find a lot of value in the community aspect of it. So again, just want to stress that none of these projects are affiliated with the foundation. But if you are um, a holder of VeChain and you want to dabble around in the NFT space and get acclimated, uh, those are a lot of great projects up there. Mad V Apes, Phenonymous, Exo Worlds, and uh, Forest Nation. And then even further to the right of those two marketplaces that you can use on VeChain, which would be World of V and VC. And finally, that that final pin tweet over there is XP Network to where if you do pick up a VeChain NFT and for whatever reason you feel like sending it to Polygon or Algorand or uh, Ethereum, you have the ability to do so with this, with this awesome protocol. So guys, I really am thankful that... Um, you see the value in the VeChain NFT ecosystem and you've um, went ahead and taken the steps to bridge over there. Um, how has the uh, developer side of the VeChain community been of assistance to you guys in these bridging? 
you guys having like pri- are you guys having like uh, private meetings with some of the developers for the marketplaces? Um, you know, are they reaching out to you? Are you reaching out to them? Tell us a little bit about how those conversations started. Like whenever you decided to start working with V Chain Bridging. Well, uh, we actually started working with the blockchain itself first. So we have a Telegram group with the team, and uh, whenever and this is usually the case with all the blockchains except for like Ethereum and BSC maybe. All the rest, we have groups where whenever we have a question, whenever there's something we don't understand, uh, we ask, and usually we get a quick reply. Uh, This is the case with VeChain as well. Uh, We're in very good communication with the team. They're very nice guys and very helpful whenever it is required. So this is actually also a sign for all the NFT projects that uh, who, who are only planning to either migrate uh, to VeChain or to build on VeChain, that this is one of the criteria that you have to take into account whenever making a choice where to build. And VeChain is a perfect place for for uh, building your projects. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. I think that VeChain is a really fun place. Also, the low gas fees and the exceptional transaction time makes trading, selling, and buying NFTs um, extremely easy and borderline addicting. I don't know if you guys know or not, but I um, this is for the listeners too. Uh, I host a VNFT based Twitter space every single Monday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, so if you guys are more interested in learning about VNFTs, we host like an hour, two hour space where we have different projects come up and and pitch what they're either about to launch or we have existing projects come up and update us on announcements or events that they may be having. So it's a lot of fun. Make sure you guys give me a follow. Tune in on Mondays to those Twitter spaces. And XP Network, guys, I, I invite you guys to come on too and hang out with us and, and kind of be DJs as well. Let's do a fun little exercise um, now that we're about the halfway mark. I'd like all the listeners in here, if you have any VeChain NFTs, click that bottom right button on your Twitter space. Um, it's our little group chat. And post your favorite VNFT and tag uh, their Twitter. And let's see what uh, what everybody's favorite VNFTs are down there in the uh in the chat, I think that'd be a really fun little exercise, and, and you guys can kind of follow each other and get to know each other, and make some connections. So, uh, near, is there? I'd like to ask: Is there any type of announcements that you guys have to make as far as maybe like marketing or um, you know new bridging or um, anything with VeChain or outside of VeChain? I'm curious. Like, do you guys have anything in the works that you maybe want to tell the listeners now? We usually call it the juicy news segment. It's essentially where something you guys may have not announced publicly but we can reward the listeners who are here today and maybe give them some alpha. So is there anything you guys have in the works that maybe qualifies as juicy news you want to give us? Sure. So I'll first off start uh, by uh, using this amazing chat, this amazing stage with the VGN community uh, to say that we are going to be present in uh, all upcoming expos uh, for the crypto space. So anyone that wants to drop, drop in and say hi, we will be in uh, Zebu Live on London, then to- Token 2049 on Singapore, then Blockchain Economy Summit on Dubai, and then we will be on the, on the Web Summit in Lisbon and Token 2049 on London in London as well. So everyone that wants to jump in and say hi, we are uh, very much looking forward to see you. Uh, so that's uh, announcement number one. And for juicy announcements, we can say that we're going to launch our uh, second batch of the cross-chain staking campaign that we are actually building up. Actually, the first staking campaign, we filled up 50 million XP nets and more than 6,000 holders. And that campaign was actually just on the BSC uh, network where we actually had uh, the token itself, uh, the XP when we launched the token and the, and the XP token itself. And now what we're going to do is that we're actually going to introduce uh, the cross-chain staking campaign, which would include additional chains. And not only that, it will be the first kind of staking campaign in the space that uh, will be, again, it's not live, so I would call that pretty juicy. So this will be the first NFT uh, staking uh, staking campaign in space that combines and includes NFTs that can actually be received as part of the uh, staking reward and that can actually be bridged and, and traded with the rewards bound to that. So it's a pretty cool con- con- concept and a pretty cool and very interesting you know, way to interact with NFTs. And this is something that we'll be sharing all about. We're also going live soon with a big PR campaign and that is actually, we produced a big video that is, that summarized uh, six months to the mainnet bridge and all the work that we've been doing with more than uh, hundreds of dApps and uh, more than uh, uh, 20 blockchains, which, of course, is one of the core ones that we are very much enjoying working with. 
And these are the these are the upcoming activities that we are focused on. Uh, of course, we are uh, also uh, you know to finish this up, we also launched. Uh, the new products that we have, the widget product, we have the API product, we have the mainnet bridge product, and uh, we have also coming up the explorer, the first explorer in the game to actually show NFTs across the different chains moving through multi-chain NFTs uh, in, a, in a complete interface of explorer to actually show that. So this is something new to the crypto market as a whole, and all of this is coming in the next few weeks. So uh, we're looking forward to that, and we are very much looking forward to the, for the virtual community to take part in that as well. Holy cow, Nir, man, I, I was not expecting the orange juice with Pulp, man, that's crazy. Um, go ahead, uh, l- listeners, show me some Yes Queen claps in the chat if you're pumped up on on uh, this juicy news. And Nir, could you tell us a little bit more maybe about the NFT staking? I mean, um, people love to hear those words thrown together, but can you break break down exactly what that means? As much as you can tell us anyways, I know it's juicy news and you guys haven't gone extremely public with it, but can you explain anything else about that? Yeah, so to be honest, the the way that I explain it, I think it sounds a bit complex, but when you actually practice it, when we are going to launch up the user interface, it's going to be pre- very simple. We worked really hard on making it very simple and very cool. Uh, but, you know, to keep it short and sweet, and I hope I make it uh, sound as uh, simple and as amazing it's, uh, as we are planning it to be as part of the campaign that is going to be live and as part of a new collection that is going to be dedicated just for that. So uh, the campaign itself, the way that it works is that you're coming in, you're staking, the, you're staking your XP nets in, uh, in the supported chain. We're going to introduce additional chains to actually have the ability to stake the XP net on. And then what you get, you get you get a unique NFT from the collection that we're actually building up, designing up, and actually sharing up. And those NFTs are true native multi-chain NFTs. So they're actually created and minted in a way that they are designed to move between the chains. And that means a lot of things, you know, as part of the royalties, as part of the mechanism of the NFTs. So, you know, bottom line, I'm not the, of course, the tech head is a demo that is here and can explain more about it, but... Uh, from my side, you know, from the co- being the commercial head, I can say that it's a very cool and easy NFTs to move between the different chains and are very unique and are very much tradable. And these NFTs are coming with with a punch. And that punch is that they're holding up the key to the rewards in the staking that they're actually, uh, the users are actually doing as part of that campaign. So again, we did something like that in a smaller cap at the first at the first round of the, of the staking that we did. We filled up fairly quickly. We've been very happy to see that. And uh, that the, ma- the the way that it works was very interesting for the community. We filled up 50 million XP nets and more than 6,000 holders generated from uh, the overall campaign that we did for the staking. And now we are launching the round two. And um, it's not live yet. So once it's going live, we will be sharing up all the information and all the ways to participate and how to acquire that unique NFT and how to enjoy from that readability and the rewards that are coming from that. That's absolutely insane, man. That's so cool. Uh, Dima, do you have any follow-up thoughts before my next question? Uh, well, first of all, we will uh, write documentation about this. So it will be for, for anyone who is in doubt how it works, uh, what benefits you're getting from that. Everything will be there. It will be very simple and explicit. And uh, second, I think we'll also make a video tutorial uh, showing how you do it and what benefits you get from that. So this is all I can say right now. Uh, once we implement it, you will see it, and I'm sure it will be very intuitive and easy for everyone to grasp. Oh, yeah. It's almost like a, you know, a birthday present whenever you get some, some good documentation you can read uh, paired with a nice video, maybe an infographic. So I really look forward to that. Let me ask, where can the community stay most up to date with what XP Network is doing? Do you guys have a more active Telegram, a more active Discord, or is it just safe to, to follow the Twitter? So the answer is all of the above. Uh, we are uh, maintaining, uh, doing our best efforts to maintain all the communities across all channels. I would say that the biggest focus and the biggest place that we have activity on is on Telegram and on Twitter. Um, and we really see good, good activity in terms of you know interest and discussions. And I would also say one more thing that uh, one of the unique things about XP Network is that we are truly are working with the different communities of the different chains. VeChain is, of course, amongst them. And you can actually expect to see activity about XP Network in those relative uh, communities as well. So we are working to be known everywhere and to be as present as possible in all, in all across the space. 
everywhere there is NFT. We're looking to talk about, you know, the multi-chain abilities and what's coming to the market as a whole. Near Dima, thank you guys so much. And I'm sure you guys, um, I'm sure you guys haven't said this yet, but I'm sure you guys think that uh, VeChain NFT community is one of the most badass and robust uh, communities that you guys have came across so far. Am I right in assuming that? You are right. You you don't have to assume it because I said it and I'll say it again. Uh, we are very much enjoying to work with both the community of VeChain and the team of VeChain. And we're doing amazing team with all of the personnel involved. And one of the things that I said before, so I repeat about it again, the VeChain community is one of the best communities that we've been interacting with. We really see the adoption and the interest and the activity and the vision around the future of NFTs. Uh, we don't see it in a lot of blockchains. Uh, we definitely see it in VeChain, and that's why we are very much happy to conduct these kind of uh, interviews and AMAs. And we are very much looking you now to incorporate more decentralized applications from VeChain and work with the community all together for uh, for a world without barriers. That's uh, that's the mission statement of XP. Amazing, Near Dima. It's been an absolute blast talking with you guys. I am a little bit starstruck because what you're bringing to the growth opportunity for v VNFTs is amazing. We have been, um, uh, we started off a small community and we've grown exponentially over the past few months. I think we have somewhere around 4,000 active NFT users on a monthly basis over here on VeChain. And it's just crazy to see all the new people popping in our spaces. And uh, you can kind of just take a stroll down our space uh, that we're having right now and see just a nice plethora of VeChain NFTs. And it's just been really, really um, great making these connections and there's more than than just uh, holding the nft itself and i'm sure you guys have kind of discovered that as you go from community to, to community it's it's much more than just holding a jpeg it's, it's really that community and and that ability to communicate with like-minded people about web3 and uh, trade jpegs in between so we've had a lot of fun and really really appreciate what xp network has done as far as shining a light on v chain nfts and also the community that lies within uh, I, I think I speak for everybody who who collects that we're extremely thankful for this and we look forward to nurturing and developing this relationship as far and high as we can take it. Near Dima, I do want to ask before we open up the floor to AMAs, do you guys have any final thoughts, anything else that you feel like we may have not covered enough during the space uh, before we open up the platform and let everybody come up here? Again, I do want to invite everybody, make sure you request up here. And if you do get approved, please raise your hand before speaking so that we can kind of keep some type of control on it. So, guys, if you want to talk to XP Network, maybe give them a compliment. Uh, maybe you've used their bridge and transferred over a VeChain NFT. Maybe you have a question or request for a certain project or service that they may or may not offer. Anything at all, um, please hit that request button and we'll bring you guys up here. Nir, Dima, do you guys have final thoughts for the day? So, first well, of all, that was... Yeah, yeah Dima. Yeah, go, go, go. Okay, so first of all, it was a, a very uh, summarized and well-placed uh, interview. Great questions. Thank you for all of them. And great for having, you know, that stage to actually speak about uh, the work, the amazing work that we are doing with VeChain, VeChain community and the VeChain team. Uh, I want to thank also Peter and, uh, and Dimitris from the VeChain team that uh, are constantly working with us and are part of the connection and bringing VeChain fully mainnet and fully working and fully well performed on the bridge itself. Uh, so, uh, the, the, so far, you know, these are my final thoughts. I feel that we covered, you know, everything that we have planned, everything that we are, you know, the way that we see things and our vision, and we are very much ready to take uh, to take up the questions. Yeah, I would like to add that uh, I really feel the enthusiasm coming from the VeChain team in terms of development, its ecosystem and uh, helping its users and residents of the ecosystem, such as the apps and marketplaces. Uh, we really don't see it in every chain. Some chains are also enthusiastic, but VeChain is one of the most enthusiastic chains we've encountered. So it's absolutely a perfect place for, for the projects to live and to, to uh, build. Uh, I'd also like to, uh, to thank uh, Peter Zhou uh, from the team. Uh, he helped us whenever we had problems. Uh, I communicated with Mitris Les, but he was another guy from the team who we spoke with. Uh, so I think Peter Zhou would like to hear inside his community that uh, he's a great guy. And thank you, Peter, <laughs> for actually helping us. And we we love being part of your community. Um, it's, it's really an honor uh, to be part of a community with so much energy and so much desire to grow.
near Dima, beautifully spoken. And, and I would like to piggyback off that and say, yeah, big shout out to Sonny, big shout out to Antonio, big shout out to Peter, um, all, all those people working behind the scenes on the foundation to really make these things go. We're excited for uh, POA 2.0. Um, we're obviously excited, enthusiastic about the NFT opportunities here on VeChain. So Dima, Nir, I, I literally can't express how awesome it has been to interact with your guys' platform, how easy it was for me to log into XP Network and transfer my VeChain NFT over to uh, my MetaMask wallet on the Ethereum chain. It's just insane, the user experience, how easy it was, um, how smooth it was. So I really want to give you guys some flowers there. Uh, it was a lot of fun, and I look forward to utilizing your guys' network uh, as much as I can in the future. And we also look forward to the staking and all the other juicy news you gave us. So uh, I'm going to bring up a speaker. We only have one request so far, but guys, if you want to request up here, feel free to come on up here and let us know about your user experience or maybe some questions you have for Nier and Dima. Let's see if we can get Selena connected here. Selena, welcome. Can you hear us? Paging Selena. Paging Selena. Maybe she's uh, still getting acclimated to the Twitter spaces. These are kind of a new thing for a lot of people. We do have some questions in the AMA uh, in the in the chat here. Uh, April Strawberry asks, when will you guys be in Singapore? I don't know the exact context of that question, but um, that's what he or she typed. Yeah, so I said before that we're going to be in all the upcoming expos. Singapore is one of them. So in terms of dates, we're going to be in Singapore. You can see us between the 28th to the 29th of uh, September. So that's actually coming very soon. So that will be the expo of Token 2049. We will be there. Please come meet us, everyone that uh, want to say hi. Great, great, great. If you guys want to use that chat to ask questions, feel free. We have Mindset333 asks, uh, will there be an airdrop to VeChain holders? And if so, where to get that information? Yeah, that's very DJ, and uh, we're always looking for the airdrops. <laughs> what do you have for Mindset? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's okay. So giveaways, uh, giveaways are definitely a part of the growth uh, economy from uh, for the crypto space and for XP Network without any exclu exclusion. Uh, we are planning on giveaway campaigns. We are planning on interacting with the communities in that sense as well. I would say that this is also part of the upcoming staking campaign. Uh, we might also introduce uh, the ability, you know, to do to take part in a giveaway, take part in a giveaway of the, our unique collections that we are going to bring in uh, with our spatial tech. So I would say that, you know, follow up and uh, keep up, you know, with the community, follow on Twitter, join Telegram and keep up the news also on the VeChain communities. Uh, once we actually uh, release a new batch of giveaways, we will be making sure to make noise about it. Very cool. Very cool. Selena, are you with us yet? Have you got it figured out? I'm wondering if I can find a Telegram uh, link, a safe Telegram link on your guys' Twitter. Um, for us to kind of pin up to the top and have people be able to easily join your guys' uh, chats over there. Hmm. I believe we have the Telegram link. Let me check. One second. You guys are just doing so many partnerships. That's all I see scrolling through. You got Nervous Network. You got Gymtown. Um Alaska Game. Alaska Gold Rush. All this stuff is just so awesome, guys. You, re you really found yeah. you really found something that's needed in the community and, and have created it at an exponential rate. I'm, I'm so impressed. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words. And I'll bring you right now the link to the Expander community. I uh, would definitely be happy to see that pinned. Uh, one second. Yeah, here we go. Let me message that. Twitter replies. So I'm putting it over the messages. So you should see that. And you, did you put that in the bottom right chat? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me poke around here and see if I can. That Was that from your personal account? Yeah, correct. Yeah, let me see if I can. Um, okay, April Strawberry follows up, says, cool, thanks, 28th to 29th September, thumbs up. Um, here we go. I got your XP network. Um, this is an official link from Near. So, guys, if you want to join the Telegram for the XP network, stay up to date. Maybe you, can, uh, maybe you don't have time to talk today. But you wanna you wanna ask them some questions. You just don't have time. Maybe you're hiding in the closet at work or or driving a, a big pickup truck or something. 
So uh, feel free to join that telegram and really reach out and connect with this community. Uh, I think that XP Network would agree that they want to hear from everybody. They want to hear about what people want and uh, they, they want to be there to field questions and give support as well. So join that telegram for any of those things. JP Vet says, keep up the good work. Thank you. And we are sure going to make that. So um, that's, that's, you know, the only play for XP Network. So keep up the good work, keep up, you know, the work, keep up developing and keeping up, building up the community and the messaging of the unified, uh, unified work that we do together. Near Dima, it looks like we have uh, we have hit our point where we don't have any more questions, any more people speak up. I do want to give a last call. Anybody who wants to come up and speak, any last questions, drop them in that chat. Otherwise, uh, Nir, I want to say thank you very much for coming up, taking the time out today. Dima, I want to say thank you very much for, for taking the time out today and both you guys coming up here and chatting with the VFAM, uh, is what we call ourselves, hashtag VFAM, look us up, um, and the VNFT community in general. We're, again, we're very thankful and, and also really excited to uh, lean into your guys' product and and see what we can do with it. Um, I'm sure there's even some some developers and people who want to maybe even try to break it a little bit. So we're excited to play around with XP Network. Um, we love sending over those NFTs and also really appreciate the coverage um, and spotlight you put on us. So Nir, thank you very much for coming out. Dima, thank you very much for coming out. And also to the listeners down there uh, who have hung out with us and, and really gotten to know Nir and Dima and XP Network. Um, thank you guys uh, for listening and, and being a part of the show as well. My final thank you would go to uh, VeChain Foundation for hosting and uh, just being an awesome, supportive um, entity in, in as far as our, our NFT endeavors go. Um, it seems like they see us, they, they like that we're making noise, and and uh, the VNFT community looks forward to growing alongside the foundation. So, Nir, Dima, uh, again, thank you all so much for coming out. I know you guys are both busy, so we'll wrap up the space. I do want to give you one more quick second to... Uh, Shout out the community, shout out any listeners, shout out any projects, anything you want to do uh, with this next couple of minutes, it's, it's totally up to you. So we'll start with Dima. Dima, you got anything else for us, sir? Yeah, I want to thank you for a wonderful AMA, for so much energy, for so much pos positive emotions uh, here. Uh, it's a great AMA, and uh, we're very thankful to to the community for coming. Um, <laughs> that, that's what I wanted to say. Thanks, Dima. It's, it's been an absolute pleasure and uh, one of my favorite interviews of all time, to be honest. So it really has been great. Nir, do you have anything else for us, sir? Wow, very much. Uh, what a great, you know, compliment. We're very much happy to, to create that experience, you know, for you and for the community. And we've also very much enjoyed uh, the interview itself. It's been very coherent and we are looking forward uh, for the next one with the new updates. And it's been a pleasure. And thank you, everyone, for participating. Thanks, guys. It was a lot of fun, and I hope to see you, uh, see you guys. If you find some extra time, pull up to a VeChain DJ space, man. Um, maybe let us talk you into getting a couple of VNFTs yourself, and, and we, we just look forward to uh, growing that relationship between the VNFT community and you guys. Foundation, I know that you don't often have any final thoughts, but uh, I would be remiss not to offer. So, Foundation, if you're there, maybe on mobile, uh, do you have any final thoughts before we wrap up? <laughs> last thing we're going to do before we leave uh get flames going to give you a little bit of homework let's make sure you're following the foundation page let's make sure you're following near um i think he's maybe what 16 followers away from oh we got 11 followers away from 5,000 homework right now we're not leaving the space until near hits 5k so let's do that right now drop what you're doing park the car uh, tell your boss you got to go on a smoke break, whatever it is. We're getting near to 5K followers right now on behalf of VFAM and all the community in this space. So drop what you're doing. Go follow Nier right now, right at the top of the space. Let's also give Dima some followers as well. He says he doesn't use Twitter often. I think it's time to change that. Uh, true NFT DGENs wake up and the first thing they do is uh, check that Twitter and that Discord and that Telegram. So guys, make sure you do your homework. Follow Nier, follow Dima, follow Foundation. And hell, if you're feeling crazy, give Flame a follow too. But just know you're getting yourself into some D-Gen stuff. All right, guys. That was a lot of fun here in Dima. I hope we can do another interview soon. So make sure you guys reach out. Keep that uh, communication open. And, and I look forward to doing maybe a Thursday or another Tuesday interview. So much fun. And uh, I, I just look forward to it. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thanks a lot. And the next time, we'll tell you more about the new chains that we recently integrated and the opportunities uh, VeChain users uh, will have um, knowing this fact. 
Much love, much love, Nir. Much love, Dima. Um, and much love all the listeners down there. Guys, we're going to close down the space. So you guys have a wonderful Tuesday. Enjoy the rest of your week. Uh, and remember to be safe. Uh, and appreciate your family. Chase your dreams. All that good stuff. BFAM loves you. Come on over. Hang out with us. And uh, we look forward to having you. Thank you, guys. Have a good day. Flame out. Thank you, guys. Thanks.